Hello guys, how have you been? First of all, I want to congratulate you for have sitting the ability test exam. And this is an opportunity for us to go through the questions together and to see how well you have done. Be mindful that you do have two other components to sit, the curriculum based task and the performance task. So do not worry if you weren't satisfied enough with these responses, because at least this will help you to know and you know practice more to do great in those other two components. So let's go right in. Okay, so here it says there are 40 items on this test. Each has only one correct answer. Read each item carefully, select the correct response, then shade the corresponding letter of the answer you choose in the answer sheet provided. Select the best option that completes the sentence for items one to four. So item one says, question is to answer as problem is to solution. So we will select solution for our best answer. For item two, it says ocean is to Atlantic as sea is to. Good, we have the Atlantic Ocean, we have the Caribbean Sea. So Caribbean will be our correct response here. Airplane is the flight attendant as school is to. So the flight attendant works on the airplane who works at the school. We'll select teacher as our best option because a school needs a teacher and the principal is also a teacher. Wheel is to invention as fire is to discovery. For items four and five, choose the option that has the correct alphabetical order. So let's look. All of them starts with E. Then we have EN and comes before T. So EN E energy goes first. EN E, we have engine goes second. G comes after E. We have entertain so we have ENT and ENT but E comes before I then we have entice then we have eternal so our answer would be three five one two four so we have aggressor Aggression, aggrieved, aggregate, aggressive. So they all start with A G G R. Okay. A G G R E S S. Let's see. All right. Aggrieved I before E. So we have all these E's coming first. So we have aggregate. A G G R E G. One, we have aggression, I comes before I, O, okay. So we have four, two, aggression. Then we have aggressive. Then we have aggressor, and then we have aggrieved. So our response will be, Aggregate, which is four, two, five, one, three. Which option is not a necessary component for the word in bold type for seven items seven to nine? Market. Well, for a market. We don't need crowd, but we definitely will be needing fruits, vegetables, and vendors. So not is the word here. 
the operative word that we're looking at. So crowds are not necessary for markets, but fruits, vegetables, vendors are. Month, we have week in months, we have day in months, but not all months have holiday. And if we have week in months, Sunday will also be a part of month. So which one is not necessary? That would be holiday. We have email at number nine. For an email, we need a sender. We don't need an attachment. We definitely need a receiver and we need a message. So our answer is B for number nine. Okay, so for items 10 and 11, which word is least similar to the word in bold type? We have a category. So group means category, set means category, standard can mean category in some um, instances, class means category. So the one that is least similar will be standard. Now it says least similar. It means that they are similar, but the least similar. For modern, unique. For it to be unique, it doesn't have to be modern, but modern means recent. It means latest. It also means new. So the least similar would be unique. For items 12 to 14, Examine the options, that select, then select the one that does not belong in the group. Does not. That's the operative word. That's the word we're going to focus on mainly. So at number 12, we have obstacle, hurdle, barrier, entrance. Now, obstacle, hurdle, and barrier, those are synonyms, but entrance isn't. A synonym for those so the one that does not belong would be entrance number 13 we have sketch that means pencil to paper illustration also means pencil to paper photo we can capture a photo using a camera uh drawing means pencil to paper so the one that is least that does not belong would be photo we don't draw a photo. We make an illustration with our pencils, sketch and drawing as well. We have pair means two, trio means three, duo means two and both mean two. So trio does not belong. For items 15 and 16, which option reflects a pattern? Okay, so let's look at A, A, E, three letters away from A, H, two letters away, L, three letters away, M, the next letter, so no, B, A, C is one letter away, or should I say two letters away, F, three letters, G, the next letter, so we are not seeing a pattern there. At uh, option C, we have A, D is two letters away, G is two letters away, J is two letters away, and M is two letters away. That looks like a pattern to me, but let's check the fourth one anyway. A, J is many letters away. <laughs> then we go back to B. Then we go down to K. Wow. But if it's going to be a pattern, we'll now go back to C and we're not seeing that. So C is showing a pattern. 17, read the statements in each bubble, then select the option that represents a conclusion from the statements. Statement one says, all students who do well in science study during the night. So that means the ones who don't study in the night, they didn't do well. All right, Raquel does not, Raquel does well in science. Uh, Raquel, this means then that Raquel studies in the night. So all students who do well in science study during the night. Raquel does well in science. All right, so here 
the conclusion we can draw, will it be Raquel studies during the night? Yes, that can be a conclusion that we can draw from both statements because um, it says both statements here. Nighttime is the best time to study. We can conclude that from only statement one. All students study during the night. Uh, we didn't get that from the statements here. It didn't say that. Science is Raquel's favorite subject. So it didn't say C nor D. So our answers are between A and B. And nighttime is the best time to study can only be concluded from one statement. So our correct answer would be A, which says Raquel studies during the night. Study the chart below carefully, then use it to answer item 18. Sydney asked her neighbor, Jordan, to take care of her dog for her while she's away. Use the chart to help Jordan decide how much dog food she should give to Hunter each day. All right, so this is the chart. Let's try to make sure we can see the question as well as the chart. And it's okay at the same time. All right, so... Here it says Sydney's dog is eight weeks old. So let's go on the chart to find where, okay, seven to 10. That means Sydney's dog falls between this band and weighs 17 kilograms right here. So let's look. So eight weeks old, 17 kilograms mean three cups. So which is correct is the correct amount of food to be fed to Sydney's dog? And that would be B. Three cups. All right. Items 19 and 20 have words and their meanings taken from an, an, an artificial language. Read them carefully, then use them to help you select the correct option. So we have this word. I'm just going to pretend it's a real word and call it. <laughs> so we have Dunkin Bluff, and it means workforce. We have Morup. Dunkin means groundwork. We have Dunkin Nalti means workplace. Ooh, they almost sound like real words. Well, perhaps they are. I just don't know this language. <laughs> Which word could mean some place? So we're going to look to see if we see some in any of these English words that we know. We don't see some, so we cannot like decode any of these to say these set of letters mean some. Let's look for place. We do see place in this word, and it's at the end. So let's see here what is at the end. Okay, so alti is at the end here. So let's look for a solution that has Alti at the end, that would mean, or that could be the correct option. So we have this one, Alti Bluff. We don't have Alti at the end. Dunkin Drita, Alti Morup, and Drita Alta, Alti. So this one could mean some place. As you can see, they have the same ending. We have. Dio Kirk means oak tree. Sehen Oak Kirk means oak leaf. Hmm. And Sehen Krin means maple leaf. I think Kirk means oak. Because it's the same in both, and it, but it comes to the end. So we have maple syrup. That means we need to find what says maple. And it would be the end part. So Krin is at the end, because as you can see, oak tree, this word looks like it's flipped in a way. So the first English word comes to the end of this artificial language. So maple will now be at the end of this artificial language. We have maple in the options here, in the English words, but we don't have syrup. So we're going to look for where we have the artificial language or phoneme for maple, which is crin, and see which word down here ends with crin, that could mean maple syrup. The only one I see is Patrick crin. So this would be 
the correct option for the word that could mean maple syrup using the artificial language. Now we're going to the math part of the ability test. It says to examine the pattern below, use it to answer item 21. So first let's find the rule in this pattern, seven, 11. This looks like we add four here, 11 and 15. It looks like we add four again. 15 and 19, it looks like we add four. The rule looks like we need to add four. So 19 plus four would give us 23 and four plus 23 would give us 27. So which number will correctly place the asterisk in the pattern? That would be 23. Four cells are marked on the grid below. The location for three of these cells are also given in the key. Use the grid and the key provided to answer item 22. So this is the grid. Let's see if we can get both on the page good. All right, so we're looking, it says, what is the cell location of the diamond? But let's first look at the key. So on the key, the heart is A5. The letter comes before the number. So Part is at A5. The spade is at D1. And the clubs is at F3. So let's look for the diamond. The diamond would be at C4. So C4 will be our correct response. Examine the patterns below. Use it to answer item 23. Which of the following correctly places the asterisk? All right. Okay. All right. So let's observe here. The first one, let's use this circle for a little marker. So we have the circle, diamond, heart, then we have the heart, which was right here, moving up to the top, the circle following, then the diamond, then we have the diamond moving now up to the top here, following this, um, by, followed by the heart, then the circle, then so after the diamond, we need to have what at the top? What comes after the diamond? That would be the circle. So we would have a circle at the top, followed by what follows the circle, the diamond, and then the heart. So we can look for that down here. So the circle will be at the top, followed by the diamond and the heart. We have another one with the circle at the top, but the heart does not come after the circle. The heart comes before the circle. So our correct response would be B. And we can double check to see because you realize at the top here we have a circle, heart, diamond, circle, heart. That sounds like a good pattern. At the side here, we would have diamond, circle, heart. So if we have circle here, that means our diamond will come here as well. So we can use any of those ways to figure out what the pattern would be. All right. Use the clues in the rectangle below. Uh, describe the clues in the rectangle below. Describe a two-digit number. Use them to answer item twenty-four. So here are the clues. It says the number is less than fifty. That means it could be number one to forty-nine. Less than the number is greater than twenty. So that means the number is twenty-one to 49, one of those numbers. The number is a multiple of three. Clearly could be 21, 24, 27, 30, 33, 36, 39, 42, 45, 48. Uh, the digits three, six, and nine are not in the digits in that number. So now let's look at number 24. Which of the following could be the number described by the clues? So we look at what we need here we can look at the answers. Now, 19 is less than 20, so that would not be a correct answer. 
36 has the digits 3 and 6 in it, that would not be a correct answer. 48 is less than 50, greater than 20, is a multiple of 3, and it doesn't have 3, 6, or 9 in it. So that looks like a good answer to me. And But let's go to D. 54 is greater than 50, so that would not be a correct answer. So the best answer here and the correct answer would be 48. Examine the three shapes below. Each shape represents its own unique set of digits. Use them to answer item 25. So we have the circle, 2, 4, 6, 8, triangle, 1, 3, and square, 5, 7. In any given number, each shape represents one of the digits given in the set. Which three digit number could be represented by square, circle, triangle? So square, the number has to start with five or seven. So five, seven, seven, so D is definitely out. John is thinking of a number that is more than 899 but less than 997. That means, okay, which of the following numbers could Ron be thinking of? Well, if it's more than 899, that means it starts at 900, but it's less than 997, that means it ends at 996. So from 900 to 996, we are going to look for a number that falls right there. So we have... All right, the table below shows the value of, an, of a house and an apartment taken from a game. Use the information to answer item 27. So we have the house, its value is $150. The apartment is $300. Which of the following is true? The value of A, two houses is the same as one apartment. Two times 150 is 300. That is definitely true. Two houses is the same as two apartments. No, they have different values, so clearly not. One house is the same as two apartments. No, the house costs less than the apartment. And one house is the same as one apartment. No, different values. So our correct answer would be that two houses is the same as one apartment because two times 150, which is the house, gives us $300, which is an apartment. Read the information below about four family members. Use it to answer item 28. Yannick is 22 years old. So Yannick is 22. Yannick is half of Kevin's age. So if she's half of Kevin's age, Kevin is two times her age. So two times 22 is 44. So Kevin is 44. Kevin is four times older than Lee. So if Kevin is four times older than Lee, 44 divided by four, that means Lee is seven. Gavin is 16 years older than Lee. That means 11 plus six, 17. So the question asks, so Gavin is 17. The question asks, who is the youngest member of the family? And that would be Lee. So our correct answer would be B. Okay, observe the three balance scales below. Use them to answer item 29. Which object is the heaviest? All right, so let's look at this to see. So this rectangle is lighter than this dark round edge square. It's lighter, so this is heavier than the rectangle. The rectangle is the same size as this square and this square here, which is the same square, but it's the same size as the rectangle, that this dark round edge square is heavier than. So that means this dark round edge square is heavier than the rectangle and also this square, because this square is equal to the weight of this rectangle. However, this square is heavier than this shape here. So which one is the heaviest? 
So this will be the heaviest because this is heavier than the rectangle. It's heavier than this. And if this is heavier than something, which is this, it's also heavier than this other shape. So the heaviest shape would be D, the dark round edge square. Okay, let's move up to this question. The diagram below shows a container to be filled with two liters of water. Use it to answer item 30. So this is the container that is shown below, and this is a two liter mark. The question says in each of the following options, each container holds the same amount of water as the container above. Which of the following will likely fill the container with water? Exactly to two liters. Okay, let's try to get it all on one page. Here we go. Okay, so for A, we have like a quarter of the container and another quarter. Clearly, that won't fill a two liter container. We have a quarter of the container and half. That would be like three quarters of the container. We have half and half. That looks good because two halves gives us a whole. So half would be one liter, another half would be another liter, two liters. And this one has three quarters and half, which would exceed the amount that could hold in that. So our correct answer would be half plus half gives us a full container of two liters. Three children are shown below. Tom weighs 27.9 kilograms and Sarah weighs 28.6 kilograms. Use this information to answer item 31. So this is Tom, this is Anne, this is Sarah. It says that the children are standing in ascending order based on their weight. Which of the following could represent Anne's weight? So it means Anne is heavier than Tom, but she weighs less than um, Sarah. So we need to find a number that comes between that uh, 27.9, so 28 um, to 28.5. So we need to find a number that is 28 to 28.5. One of those numbers that falls there about 30.5 would be too big because too heavy because that is heavier than zero. 29, heavier than zero, that can be an option. 28.9 is also heavier than zero. 28.2, is lighter than Sarah, but heavier than Tom. So our correct answer would be D, 28.2. This diagram below, the diagram below shows the route taken by a plane on B1. It also shows the plane's average speed, its scheduled departure time, and its scheduled arrival time on day one. Use the diagram to answer item 32. All right, so here we have, okay, on day two, the same plane leaves at the same time, travels along the same route, but travels at a greater speed to the same destination. Which time could represent the likely arrival time of the plane on day two? So here it had said that it shows the plane's average speed, Departure, and time, departure time, arrival time. Okay, day one. So day two here, we know that we're finding a time that is earlier than its arrival time, which is five o'clock. It leaves at the same time, 3.30. It travels along the same um, route, but at a greater speed. So it has to be early. They would have to arrive earlier than 5 p.m. because if they went faster, you will reach quicker, correct? So here we have 3.30 p.m. could not be an answer because I mean, the time you depart could not be the time you'll arrive. 4.45 p.m. is 15 minutes earlier than 5 p.m. That looks very good to me. Look at 5 p.m. That cannot be the correct response because if you travel quicker, the speed is greater. That means you'll arrive earlier. 
and 5 p.m. is the same time. 5.15 is later than 5 o'clock. And I mean, you're going to the same place, but this time you had a greater speed and you reach later. <laughs> All right. So our correct answer here would be 4.45 p.m. This is 15 minutes earlier than 5 p.m. And since you use a greater speed, you will be arriving a little bit earlier. The table below shows the make and color of cars in stock at a car dealership. Use it to answer items 33 and 34. Now, here we see the make of the car. We have Honda, Toyota, Subaru, Mazda. We have them in red, white, and black. Okay, so with the Honda here, let's see how, how many Hondas we'll have. We have 8 plus 5, 13 plus 4, 17. 17 Hondas in total. Toyota, we have 2 plus 15, 17. Plus 5, 22. For the Subaru, we have 7 plus 6, 13 plus 5, 18. For the Mazda, we have 4 plus 16, 20 plus 1, 21. All right, let's see the questions. See, I like to think about these things even before I look at the questions, but uh, you can use your own strategy, anything that works for you. Which make of car has the largest stock at the car dealership? So we can see now which of these cars, the Honda, the Toyota, the Subaru, or the Mazda, which of them has the most cars there. And we can see it would be Toyota. Toyota has 22 cars, which is greater than the others. So our correct answer here would be A, Toyota. It says a buyer purchases a black car. What are the chances that the make of the car is a Subaru or a Toyota? Here we have the Subaru and the Toyota. They have the same number of black cars. So what are the chances that the buyer may purchase a black car? All right, so here we have, clearly we have more Toyota and more Subaru than the others. So what is the likelihood? What are the chances? I would say it's very likely that they choose a Toyota or a Subaru. So the correct answer here would be likely. The pie chart below shows the sports preferred by 106 grade 6 students at a school. Use it to answer items 35 to 37. So these are the preferred sports, netball, tennis, football, cricket, track and field. Which sport is least preferred by the grade 6 students? Okay, looking at this pie chart, I can see that tennis has the smallest, smallest portion. So tennis is least preferred by these grade six students. Which two sports are preferred by more than half of the grade six students? Okay, so let's look at netball and cricket. Netball and cricket. Hmm. Netball and cricket would be less than half. Half is about here. So netball and cricket is a less than half. Uh, we have tennis and football. Tennis and football is it's about here would be half. So they are also less than half. Cricket and track and field. Cricket, track and field would be half would be about here. They too are less than half. Football and track and field. Okay, half would be about here. So it's greater than half, and it, asks, it says more than half. So football and track and field, T would be the correct answer. As if I were supposed to make a half line, it would exceed by a bit more. So more than half of the grade six students, these two sports would represent that. The number of students who prefer netball is three times the amount of students who prefer tennis. How many students prefer tennis? 
So number of students who prefer netball is three times the number who prefer tennis. Let's get this a little smaller. Okay. All right, so let's look. Netball is here and tennis is here. Netball is three times tennis. So, and if you see, you realize this is 90 degrees, that means it's a quarter of. So if this is 90 degrees, this part represents 90 degrees. And tennis here is a little, this portion, if you look at it and it says three times the amount, this would be then that our answer would be, cannot be five, because if this is 90, or a quarter of, so a quarter of 160 would be 40. So this is quarter 90 degrees. So a quarter of 160 would be 40. And if tennis takes up uh, one third of that 40 or not quite one third, but the netball is three times more than. So it means then that if we're supposed to divide this show that this is three times more than and this is supposed to be 40 tennis would be 10 20 30 40 so tennis would be 10 students so it cannot be five because clearly as we work it out here it cannot be 30 30 would be more than half of and it cannot be 40 that would be in all of them so our correct answer here would be there are 60 animals on a farm. Cows, goats, chickens. There are 15 chickens and there are three more goats than cows. How many cows are on the farm? So 60 animals on a farm. Cows, goats, chickens. There are 15 chickens and there are three more goats than cows. So we know exactly that there are 15 chickens. Out of the 60 animals, there are 15 chickens. So 60 take away 15 would be 45. So we now have to share this 45 between the cows and the goats. It tells us though that there are three more cows than there are goats. So I, for me, my strategy, I would find the half or closest to half of 45, so I could say 22 and 23 would, be, would, be, would make 45. But it says then that goats is three more than cows. So I could make this goats, it's more than cows, and this cows. However, it says goats are three more. This is showing one more than cow. So if I take one from 22 and now make it 21, and put the one on, so this is now 21, put the one on the 23 to make it 24. I can now look to see if it is three more. So the difference of 21 and 24 would be three. So that means that there would be how many more cows? It would be 21 cows on the farm and 24 goats. So our correct answer would be 21. For items of 39, there is a question followed by two statements. Read the statements carefully to see if they provide enough information to help you to answer the question. Question is, how many students in grade six are members of the Brownie Club? Statement one says, all the girls in grade six are members of the Brownie Club. But did it tell us how many students there are in grade six? It did not. Statement two says more than half of the students in grade six are girls. It did not tell us how many students are in grade six. So we still are not able to find out how many from this information. But let's look at the responses, look at the solutions. Statement one alone is enough to answer the question, is it? It tells us that all of them are in the Brownie Club, but how many is all of them? Statement two alone is enough to answer the question. No. So those two, um, A and B, 
will not provide, um, will not be correct responses. Because statement one alone, it does not tell us how many at all. If it says 25 girls are in grade six, the up here, it didn't tell us that there are 25 students, um, 25 girls in grade six or anything. It says all of the girls, but how many means we have to find the number. Both statements together are enough to answer the question. Still, if we have both statements, which we do, it did not tell us a number, number of students or number of girls. Both statements together are not enough to answer the question. No, they are not enough. So the correct response would be D. This asks how many students, and we did not receive a number of students in grade six. For us to start calculating that half of them are girls, so it's not that there are 30 students in grade six, and it says all the girls in grade six, so if we know there are 30 students, we now need to know how many are girls. More than half are girls, so we know that 15, you know, it did not tell us. So D, both statements together are not enough to answer the question with the correct response. And our final question. The information below represents that what Jenny observed about the number of points she earned after shopping at the supermarket. Use the information to answer item 40. On day one, Jenny bought one bag of groceries and earned four points. So one bag is four points. Day two, Jenny bought three baskets of grocery and earned the same number of points she earned for the one bag of groceries she bought on day one along with two more points. So she earned four points plus two more points, six points for three baskets of groceries. On day three, she bought one trolley of groceries and earned the same number of points she would have earned if she bought five baskets of groceries on day two. The question says, how many points did Jenny earn for one trolley of groceries? Of, for the one trolley of groceries she bought on day three. In order to know how many, how many points will be allotted for one basket, we now have to divide these six baskets by, by three, the six points by three baskets to know how many points will be for one. So six divided by three will give us three to self one and three to six goes two. So it means then that each basket would be, each basket would be two points. So if one trolley is equal to five baskets, it means then that, let's look at the question again, how many points did Jenny earn for one trolley? So one basket is two, five baskets would be five times two. So she would get how many points on this day? Five times two is 10. So 40 would be C. How did you do? Remember again that this is just allowing you to know that you need to rev up the engine and be more prepared for your CBT and your performance tasks if you did not score as well in the ability test. But don't forget to leave down in the comment section. Tell us how did you do in the comment section based on what you remembered from the questions and your answers. I would love to know, okay? All the very best in your endeavors, all the very best in the exams to come. And remember, preparation is key. So don't forget to practice, practice, and practice. Bye.